Okay, this example is really a continuation of the mortgage example. In this case, we're going to try to investigate what happens after the five-year term of the mortgage expires. We'd like to know what is the amount of money still owing. Uh, pause the video for a moment, read the problem yourself. We'll call this part two of the mortgage problem. Uh, once you've read it, digested the problem, and you're ready to see the solution, restart the video. Okay, so recall that in the first part of this problem, we had a, uh, an original amount that was borrowed of $150,000. We called that the mortgage amount. We were also given N, the number of months, equal to 120. Remember, this came from 10 years times 12 months per year, 120 months. And we also calculated the monthly interest rate, and that came from our 10% uh, nominal rate divided by 12 compounding periods because the way the rate was quoted was 10% compounded monthly, which gave us that 0.833 repeating percent value. And when we use the concept of equivalence, we came up with a value of the mortgage payments, the annuity that was equivalent to the 150,000 over the amortization period of 10 years came up with a monthly payment of $1,982.26. So this was where we ended up in the previous or in part one of this mortgage problem. However, Recall from that problem that there was something called the term, and the term of the mortgage was equal to five years, not 10 years. 10 years was the amortization period. That's what we use to calculate the monthly payments. But the term, that was the deal with the bank for how long this interest rate would still apply. At the end of five years, the borrower needs to renegotiate the terms of the mortgage with the bank. And in order to do that, we need to know how much of the original borrowed amount, we call that the principal of the mortgage, the 150, how much of the 150,000 is still owing? Well, we have to be very careful that we stay consistent with the concepts of the time value of money when we do these calculations. And the challenge here is that each of these payments of 1982-26, each payment uh, every month, some portion of that payment is really covering the accumulated interest for that month, and some portion is actually going down to pay down the original 150000 We sometimes refer to that as the principal amount. As we move through time, a larger and larger percentage of the annuity payment amount will actually go towards paying down the principal of the mortgage. But it's quite complicated. We can uh, understand how the principal and interest payment components of a mortgage payment um, uh, change over time by constructing something called an amortization table. And you might find something like that in your textbook. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to use a little bit of time value of money logic in order to calculate how much money is still owing at the end of five years on this original $150,000 mortgage. So I'd like to pretend for a moment that this individual did not make any payments on their mortgage. So I'm going to write that down. Pretend no payments were made. And if I pretend no payments were made, really what I'm calculating is how much interest would accumulate on the $150,000 over a period of five years. So in order to do that, I'm gonna calculate the future value, right, the value at the end of five years or 60 months, 
at the end of 60 months, how much has the $150,000 grown to? So in order to do that, I will take the present value, the P, 150,000, and I'll multiply by the F given P for um, a certain interest rate, a certain number of periods. And in this example, we have the numbers for those. I'll put here 150K, I'll abbreviate it, times the F given P factor for 0.833 repeating percent and 60 years. Now recall from the first time through this problem that because we don't have a nice round integer number for the interest rate, we have to use the formula. Um, the F given P formula is actually the pretty easy one. Um, it should be a nice easy one to remember. We'll do 150K times 1 plus 0 0.0083 repeating to the power of 60. And if I work this out, I should end up with a value of uh, 150K. And I'll write the factor in here just to make sure that you can actually do the math and get the same number that I did. I have 1.645389. You don't need that many decimals, des places after the decimal, but um, it never hurts. I end up with a value of 246,796.34. That would be the future amount, and I'll put here at the end of five years. So just to recap what I've done, just for a moment, I've pretended that this person has made no payments and simply borrowed $150,000, let interest accumulate for 60 months at a rate of 8.3% per month. And at the end of those five years or 60 months, that person in theory would owe $246,796.34. However, I know that this person did in fact make their monthly payments. In fact, I know exactly what they paid. So from the first part of this problem, I know that this person has paid $1,982.26 every month. So if I know what they paid and I know the interest rate every month, then I can calculate the future value of the annuity over 60 months of the payments. Whatever that future amount equals would be the amount of money the person has paid towards both the interest and the principal. If I then take that amount and subtract it from what the uncontrolled growth with no payments would be, I will end up with the amount of money still owing on the mortgage or the amount of money still owing on the original $150,000. So let's try and do that. So the next thing I'd like to do is calculate the future value so the future value of the annuity, so the annuity is the payments, and I'll use the F given A, I, N formula. And then for our particular problem, the annuity is the 1982.26 times the F given A factor for 0.833% for 60 months. Now, Again, I need to use a formula for the F given A because I can't use a compound interest table because it's not a nice round number. So I'm just going to show you what the formula is. The formula for the F given A is 1 plus I to the N minus 1 over I. Right, so if you, you'll input these values of I and N into that formula, that will give us the compound interest factor to use here. I end up with 1982.26 times that compound interest factor, which is 77.437072. If I work out what that value is, I end up with 153,549 
makes sense. Okay, so this represents the future value of all of the monthly mortgage payments for those five years. Now what I can do, I can go back to that logic like I said at the beginning and say, well, the total amount of money that should still be owing on the mortgage, so let's say the outstanding amount after five years will simply be $246,796.34 minus the amount of money that he actually paid make sure that you understand both of these numbers have used the proper time value of money calculations and the reason that I can subtract this number from this number is that those two numbers occur at the same point in time, right? So those, both of those numbers occur at time t equal to 60 months. That's why, that's the only reason I can subtract those numbers because they're at the same point in time. If I subtract those, the, the numbers, I get 93,295 dollars and 85 cents. So at the end of five years, this individual will go back to the bank and take out a new loan, mortgage, whatever we want to call it, um, for this amount. So this becomes the new amount that has to be paid out over the next term that's negotiated with the bank, which may be at a different interest rate. So this is how we calculate the amount of money still owing on the mortgage at the end of five years.